Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 10. We begin with breaking news tonight as a police officer has been injured in a car crash in Grand Forks. Police say it was a three car collision on 17th Avenue South. The intersection of Columbia Road South and 17th Avenue South was shut down for a period of time. Investigators say a van driven by Bradley Bruce of Emirato was driving erratically westbound on 17th Avenue South and initiated the contact with the squad car driven by Officer Kyle Masalik. Officers' a car then struck a pole. The van then went on, struck another vehicle driven by Casey Lowney and her two children head on. All of the people were taken to the hospital with what was described as non life threatening injuries. Bruce is facing numerous charges, including DUI. A Detroit Lakes family of four is expected to arrive in Fargo shortly after an extended trip to Mexico, courtesy of last weekend's blizzard. Heavy snow brought air travel to a standstill in the Twin Cities, leading to numerous cancellations. The Pettit family was told by their airline, Sun Country, that they had to find their own way home because the airline had ended seasonal service there. Stranded in Cabo San Lucas, Abby Pettit and her family were able to get a return flight that included a connection to Fargo on American Airlines. Her mom tells us the Pettits had to spend an extra $2,500 for two extra days in a hotel and four one-way tickets back home. Many in the Fergus Falls, Minnesota community gathered tonight to remember six-year-old Justice Berlin, who was murdered after a short life plagued with abuse by his caregivers. And while tonight's vigil was about celebrating his life, family members of the six-year-old called for changes within the Child Protective Services. All who were present wore blue ribbons on their clothing to promote child well-being and in honor of Child Abuse Awareness Month. And as for Justice's brother, Xavier, his family hopes he will fall into the right hands. You think a family member reporting another family member would raise a red flag or something somewhere, but CPS didn't do nothing about it here, and it's upsetting. There needs to be something done. There needs to be a national-wide database for CPS and CPS offenders that abuse children or have a history of abusing children. The two people Justice was living with, Bobby Bishop and Walter Winhoff, have been charged with third-degree murder. After the story about justice unfolded, one area school teacher says she doesn't want to feel helpless about the situation anymore. Kelly Arneson teaches health and phi ed at Underwood Public School. She decided to get her seventh through ninth graders involved in creating a book of positive words for justice's surviving twin, Xavier. Arneson is delivering that book to Human Services early next week. Spring has arrived, and that's a good thing. Finally kicking the door open, but that might include a hiccup for some, just Hutch likes to call it. He's here now to tell us more about our morning and what it's going to look like. Hutch? Well, tonight things are quieting down wind-wise. We have clear skies, so I expect some chilly temperatures as we go through the overnight hours. Good news is cloud-free skies and no precipitation on the radar in our neck of the woods. Our wind will become light and then shift to become easterly or maybe even a little southeasterly in some spots as we'll dip into the 20s in most locations. That bank of clouds moving in from the west could yield one or two flakes of snow, but I don't expect anything significant there. So it's going to be a chilly start to your Tuesday, but it looks like a nice warm-up. Mike will talk more in depth about that hiccup and what we can do to make them hiccups go away for the rest of the week here in a moment. Well, let's hope they're just brief hiccups. Yes. All right, thanks. One lady is out close to 645. Um, some people are out way more than me, and it's not that I'm upset that I'm out money, whatever, I can get that replaced, but you don't do that to people. Dozens of people have been contacting us about fraudulent checks on Facebook buy and sell pages. And now those people are speaking out. They want to warn others about the dangers behind accepting checks from people they meet online. Valley News Team's Melanie Palmer explains what you need to watch out for when buying or selling on these Facebook groups. You just can't trust anybody anymore nowadays. It's, um, it's not like it used to be. You got to be careful with everything you do. This isn't the same town that we once all lived in. These two local women have something in common. They are both saying they were given fraudulent checks from the same person and there are more making those claims. The next day I went on Facebook and I saw that um, another lady had posted on the online garage sale page 
that she got a bad check from her. And sure enough, I called the bank and it, it was a bad check. It wasn't even cashable. Juliana Slavic was trying to sell some kids toys online when she was given a bad check for 70 bucks. Her exact words were, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to scam anybody. <laughs> Juliana went to the woman's home and got her stuff back. Tagging along were members of another family who went through the same thing. The bank had called me and told me that um, the check had bounced and asked me if I wanted them to try to redeposit it. Melissa and Shane's 13 year old daughter was selling designer brand clothes on one of these pages. This time, the alleged scammer wrote a check for $585. It too bounced, so they asked for their clothes back. We did get our things back, which, you know, but it's just the fact of reselling it, redoing everything. You know, our, like I said on Facebook, our daughter has no trust right now. And now these three want others to know. Don't accept checks ever on the online garage sale, especially if you're buying something from someone that you don't know. Don't make the mistake me and other people made. After hearing these stories, I went to the woman's apartment. We tried to get to the bottom of what's going on with these checks. She didn't answer the door and didn't return our calls. I was calling because multiple people have reached out to us. Saying we also were... contacted the Fargo Police Department to see if they're investigating the situation. They say they're aware of it, but don't expect charges to be filed. In Fargo, Melanie Palmer, Valley News Live. The officer we spoke with says these cases are more of a civil matter and encourage people to contact the state's attorney. Authorities also advise people to use cash in these situations. And if you find yourself in the same case as these people did, it's encouraged to call authorities and report what happened. Authorities are searching for the man who got away by punching a deputy in the chest several times on Saturday. The deputy had stopped 47-year-old Lonnie Howard on I-94 in Bismarck. When the deputy approached the vehicle, Howard didn't have an ID and pushed the deputy away, then rammed another vehicle that stopped to help the deputy before getting away. Authorities have located Howard's car, which was abandoned. Today, Cargill Malt Plant at the Spiritwood Energy Park will be closing in October of 2018. A spokesperson for the plant said that the demand for crops and the climate had a large impact on the decision to close the plant. When it comes to employees, salary workers will get benefits such as a severance. Employees can also apply to other positions within Cargill in North Dakota or elsewhere. As of right now, the Spiritwood Malt Plant employs 55 people. Cargill Malt says that they will be supplying malt out of Spiritwood until the end of September. A couple drug stores are making it easier to empty your medicine cabinet. That's later on Valley News Live at 10. But first, a new drug combination is helping patients with lung cancer survive longer. 